Hello, I'm back. I'm wearing a microphone, yes. Okay, I think, you know what I think's going on here? Is that there, someone is, some mystical force of the universe is looking at me and saying, oh, <laughs> machine learning. I was like, this is, uh, to me, this is what felt like happening. I was about to say, I'm going to unlock all of the mysteries and wonder of machine learning, and, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> and then the fire alarm went off. So I think someone is, I think I was like literally saved by the bell there. Um, so uh, th today is really, um, I, I, I have to apologize to all of you viewers. Now things are really quite messed up for me in terms of my schedule. Um, I, I, I was streaming for about seven minutes. Oops, ah, this camera's not on. And I think... I was over here <laughs> talking about kind of machine learning in the broad sense. And the thing that I was about to do was transition over to my syllabus and start to talk about why I have some of these topics here in the first week. And then I was going to show you some examples of those and just kind of give you a, a landscape of stuff that I plan to start next week. And then a fire alarm went off. There was no fire, as far as I know. In fact, I really don't even want to admit this, but I have to be, I have to be true, I have to be honest. The fire alarm was actually in the building next door. <laughs> so technically speaking, the floor that I'm on, it's two buildings that are adjoined. You can walk between the buildings, there's a hallway. But technically, the fire alarm was the building next door. Now, it's quite loud, and I could hear it. You could probably hear it too. And <clears throat> so I thought I should leave. And you know, on my way out, I was just stopping by the fourth floor uh, to just sort of check and see if people were leaving there too. Maybe I'd go out and grab some lunch with some folks. And everyone's just sitting around at their desks because there's no fire alarm going off. Because on, on that floor, you can't, there is no walkway between the two buildings. So then I got confused. Oh, maybe the fire alarm's over. Then I came back upstairs. The fire alarm's still going off. Some people said, oh, you don't have to leave because it's the building next door. I don't know. Then I was a really loud fire alarm, so I'm not going to just sit around and do this live stream while this fire alarm is going off. You know, if a fire is in the building next door, I think it's still kind of a problem. <laughs> so um, then I, I went out for a little bit, and, uh, and then I got caught in a couple conversations. I was maybe going to get something to eat, which I didn't do. So uh, I don't know. Some time passed, and I came back, and the fire alarm is not going off anymore, and everybody's in this building, so it seems like things are okay. Um, Unfortunately, what that has done to my schedule is that, you know, I was, I was hoping to leave about now or a half an hour from now. Uh, and, you know, and I don't really have the flexibility right now to, um, first of all, so I'm very hungry. I should have eaten something, but I have a lunch appointment to go to. And so, um, I like, my energy and my brain is a little bit melted. So I'm trying to think. I've, Let's say I'm going to be here for 15 or 30 minutes. Let's look, let's, let me finish up what I was saying about machine learning. And which is that, um, and, and I probably shouldn't do this because if I'm going to do any, let, let me finish up my, that thought from before because it's in my head. So one of the, oh, I know what I was doing when the, when the fire alarm went off. Oh, I, I think I made the fire alarm go off by doing this. Let's see if I can do it again. Because here's the thing. This is, I don't understand these things, <laughs> really. But, but I'm going to try to teach them. And there's all this new research, and I, I, I go and I read these web pages, and my eyes glaze over, and they roll into the back of my head. And then, and then I, you know, I start to get this like, pain in my side, and it feels like this, like, uh, uh, this like, uncomfortable feeling in my chest, you know, <laughs> reading all these papers and stuff about neural networks. But, Oh, I said it. Did the fire alarm, is there something going on? I feel like when I said neural network, it caused the fire alarm to go off. It was saving me. But this is one of the core, this is certainly one of the, the things that I get asked about the most. So can you do a neural network coding challenge? Can you explain how a neural network works? And I do actually, I'm, I'm joking around to some extent because I do have some examples already about this idea of this thing called a perceptron, which I will build and program from scratch when we get to this week. But one of the things about a neural network uh, is, and I'm looking for my, I'm, I'm kind of a little out of whack here. Where is my uh, eraser? Here it is. Um, so one way of thinking about a neural network is 
inputs and outputs. Maybe there are some inputs, like maybe there are four inputs. Like maybe we are going to send in some information about a flower. What color is it? How many petals? How tall does it grow? I don't know, kind of thing. These are sort of values that we're going to send into the neural network. And then there might be some output, which is, or multiple outputs, which are, you know, the probability of it being a certain kind of flower, whether it's a sunflower or a daisy or a lily, whatever kind of flower you might think about. And then in between, there are all these things that are, you know, there are these inputs and then there's neurons and there's information goes here, then it goes to here, then maybe it goes to here and it goes to here and it goes to here. There's this interconnected web of neurons. The information flows, this is called a feed forward network because the information is flowing through it feed forward and all this math happens in here. So at some point I'm going to come back and look at this more closely and look at the different pieces of some of the calculations that happen in here and what kinds of things you can feed in, what kinds of things you can pull out. But the thing that I thought would be useful as kind of like a warm up to the course is looking at graph graph systems. So for example, a kind of classic computer science algorithm is something called a binary search tree, which I could draw like this. And the arrows aren't entirely necessary um, because it's not. Uh, anyway, so you get the idea of this idea of a tree with a root node that has two children that each have two children, a left and right it's binary because it only has a left and a right. Um, you could, you know, I did some videos on the traveling sales person problem a while back where maybe you have a bunch of cities and you have to figure out what is the most efficient path to, you know, make it through all the cities. That's the shortest. This is also a graph system. What if you had a subway map and you want to get from this station to this station and there are all these different possible lines and all these other possible stations and they're all interconnected in strange ways. How would you find the shortest or the route that takes the least amount of time? I looked at something called A star, which is an algorithm for looking at a graph and sort of solving your way through the graph. There's Dijkstra's algorithm, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. There's breadth first search and depth first search. So this is where I, I wanted to start as a warm up because these are network based, there's two reasons. One is these are network based systems and if we can program these systems, it's gonna give us some clues to what kind of concepts we'll need to program a neural network. You know, replace the subway map with input and output neurons and neurons and connections all in between. Um, that's item number one. The item number two, the reason number two is that I had wrote this word called illusion. <laughs> My brain is so dying. I think this might be it for me, everybody. I think I'm not, no longer thinking about things in a way that makes sense that I can explain. I didn't spell illusion correctly. I guess spelling isn't the worst thing to get wrong. I-L-L-U-S-I-O-N, pretty sure that's right. This kind of illusion of intelligence. So what, if you think about some of my examples about autonomous agents, uh, you have this vehicle that's moving around the screen, maybe it's seeking a target. What if it learns to traverse a binary tree? Or what if it learns the, the most efficient solution to the traveling salesperson problem? So can we create this appearance of, of software simulated creatures that move about a two or three dimensional space and that are, and, and you know, a neural network might be a good way to train it to like not hit obstacles. And this is something called, there's a technique called reinforcement learning, a Q, a Q learning algorithm that I hope to look at later. But even just in a sort of basic way, what if we have a lot of nodes and the agency to steer around those nodes? So this is kind of where I'm starting. Come over to the chat and see if anybody is listening to me. Um, okay, so I've, uh, so I think I'm just going to talk about this briefly. So I'm going to clone this repo and I've started doing some work on some simple examples. Um, let me go to terminal here and uh, let me go to the desktop and git clone. So for those of you who might not be familiar with GitHub, um, GitHub is a website where you can store repositories of information. 
Most people use it to store repositories of source code, and cloning is the act of downloading the information from GitHub. And I could have just, uh, I could have just gone here to do download zip, or there's also like a desktop application, but I'm gonna use the command line to paste the URL for this repo. And then I'm going to go into the repo, and I am going to um, open the repo in Atom, so I can look at some of the code, and I'm also going to run, oops, I'm going to, what's that command K? Maybe That's it, command K clears the terminal. Uh, my whole life has now changed. I'm going to run a local server. And let's take a look at some of these examples. So this is the stuff, I'm gonna do some of these as coding challenges. I've been working on these examples this week. I haven't gotten very far, but for example, let me just, <laughs> a lot of these are wrong. <laughs> There's mistakes in them. But let me look at this for a second. Oh, so this is, um, this is actually, oh, where's my prop? So this is actually a JavaScript version of an example from this book called uh, Grokking Algorithms, an illustrated guide for programmers and other curious people by Aditya Bar Bhargava. Um, and so why is, oh, my Slack chat is disconnected. I don't know why it is. Sorry, everybody in Slack. I uh, that computer is disconnected. Um, so you're listening. So um, this this particular scenario is a doing a search to find. Uh, let me let me actually. There is a. Oh look at this. This computer lost its internet connection. I'm gonna have to deal with that in a little in a second. Okay. So if I go to the code for a second and I go to this one. What I've done in this particular example, and I'm going to come back and actually program some of these next week as coding challenges, or sooner than next week if I can. And these names are, I, I'm using these names because I want to emphasize that this particular, you know, the code doesn't come from this book, but I wrote the code while reading the chapter of this book, even though I have some mistakes in the code that I've since uh, realized. Um, so, um, okay. So I'm only looking at the YouTube chat right now just for everybody's reference. Um, so, okay, so what you can see here is that I'm creating a bunch of nodes. You, Bob, Alice, Claire, Anuj. So these are nodes. Like this. You, Bob, Claire. Right? And then these nodes have various connections. For example, I can connect myself to Alice, Bob, and Claire. So if I come back, you know what I really need? Is I need a data set of Kevin Bacon movies. <laughs> That's what I need for this. So you is me is connected to Claire, it's connected to Alice, I can't remember if I was connected to Bob, but you get the idea here. Maybe Bob is connected to Anuj, and I'm connected to Bob, and Anuj is connected to someone named Tom, and Claire is connected to Tom. So the idea here is, Let's say this was a social network and these connections were whether you're friends on Facebook or you follow each other on Twitter. How could you find the degrees of separation? How could you find the shortest path if each step is one step? And we can plainly see if I want to get from myself to Tom here that the shortest path is you, me, I should just write me, <laughs> me to Claire to Tom. I could get there by going from me to Bob to Anuj to Tom but the shortest path, this only requires two steps. So the, this, is a, this is, you know, in my mind, in, in the broadest sense, artificial intelligence. A computer algorithm is solving a problem in an intelligent manner to come up with some optimal solution. And so this is where the class is going to start. And this also has the, this has the advantage of a couple things. One is there's some interesting visual outcomes, map spaces, maze spaces that steering agents can move around. Um, and the example that I'm using is using a breadth first search, although I think I might have had an error in the code and might have made it more depth first search by accident. So I'm going to look at all this stuff, and this is what I'm coming back next week to, to look at more closely. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, so that's one example. Here's another. Uh, let's look at some of these other examples. And this, by the way, that one thing that's, okay, so anybody wants to come, by the way, first of all, I would be thrilled for the world that's out there watching to contribute to this repository. So these examples are in progress. Here's a major issue with this example. 
I picked a, I'm doing a visualization of all these connections. I just put them all at random locations, which is kind of terrible. Like they really should maybe be in some sort of order that would be, make it easy to look at and see. And I could do a force directed graph. That's kind of a big complicated thing, but even just kind of having rows. So that's, that's a little challenge or visualize it in a different way if anyone wants to kind of help out with some of these examples. Um, let's go, this is, um, Incorrect. I should fix this right now. Thank you to me. I am so me. Let me try to get this other computer's internet working again. Maybe it's the NYU. Turn Wi-Fi off. Turn Wi-Fi on. Let's see if that does anything. Um, oh, what is the repository called? Uh, I don't know if anyone can post this into the... Ah, it came back. If anyone could... Oh no, quaternions! <laughs> um, uh, okay, so this is the repository. Uh, Shiftman slash all this nonsense up here. Uh, screenshot that or someone can post it who can post links in the chat. Um, okay, so here's something. This is called, um, this is a demonstration of what's supposed to be breath, breath first search, trying to get from this green dot to this green dot. And every time I refresh, ah, there we go. It got there. It finds in the shortest path the fewest number of steps, and which things are connected in this grid are random. So we can see it try to solve, and it solved that one, and we can see this. Now, here's the thing. One of the key fundamental pieces of a breath-first search is this idea of a queue. I've got this queue, a line. A queue is, if I were to demonstrate it with just myself, <laughs> I'm going to queue up to ring the bell. Yay, my turn's over. So now, the next person, comes up and rings the bell. So who, the, the first person in line is the first person who rings the bell. And then the last person in line has to wait until they become the first person in line. So what is, what, it's just like lining up to buy tickets for something, which is the opposite of a stack, which is a thing that you pile things on and then you pull things off. So the last thing in, so in a queue, the first thing in, I could diagram this. But anyway, the whole point of this is it needs a queue. Let's go look at the source code. <laughs> and I'm going to go to this one that's BFS grid animate. And the algorithm is here in this um, draw function. And look at this. It's saying q.length is greater than zero. Node equals q.pop. Now, here's the thing. I just was, I, I made up a variable called q because I want it to be a data structure of a q. But what is it actually? It's just an array. So I didn't actually implement a kind of q data structure. And um, an array, I should, an array so here's the data structure we want this is the queue, right? so if I add something to the queue it goes here at the end and if I take something out of the queue then it goes there, it's taken from the beginning. So pop pulls something out, push puts something at the end. But an array in JavaScript, if I just use the default, if I use push, push, the push function adds an element to the end, and the pop function takes an element off that end. But what I want to do is add to the end and put it out here, and I believe the correct JavaScript array function for that is shift. <laughs> so let's actually fix that in the algorithm. Q dot shift, and now let's take a look at what it looks like again. There we go. This looks much more correct. A breath first search. So it's trying, you can see how it's going sort of down and down and checking every possibility, and eventually it gets there. <laughs> so much better. Okay. Um, okay, so these are the kinds of things I want to dive into these a bit more deeply next week. Um, I'll just show you a couple more examples. Here's one um, that I was attempting to while it's running through, and let's actually fix the, um, let me go fix it in here also. Uh, change a pop to shift. So this is what I'm talking about, let me try to make this bigger, with this idea of creating an agent that appears intelligent, like it's trying to figure out the path. 
but really it just looks like a cursor <laughs> going to the like current node. So I'm looking for creative possibilities of how do we use some of these algorithms that solve certain problems in an intelligent way and then visualize them in a creative fashion where the elements on the screen appear to be solving these pro figuring these out on their own. <laughs> Everyone's just asking. Okay, so, um, uh, and then uh, these are from, um, though this is not, nothing to see here yet. This is uh, something that I did a coding challenge of quite a while ago. This is using depth first search to create a maze pattern. And this is an A star algorithm to solve a path through a maze, but this is just, not, a maze is really the wrong word for this. This is just a random grid with some, uh, some things um, being walls and some things not being walls. So um, that's what I wanna do is also, one of my goals for an example for next week is to have a steering agent move throughout a maze, solving it with A star. So anybody who wants to help, uh, uh, me, I am so me is pointing out that I didn't make the, the, uh, the connections bi-directional, which um, is an, an issue. <laughs> um, so anybody who wants to, you, uh, you, a couple things, you can, uh, you can just uh, file a pull request, you can uh, do a GitHub issue. This is what I hope to have finished. And when I say by next week, I really mean by Tuesday is when the class meets here at NYU and the next Friday is when I'm coming to do my live session. Okay, so that's kind of the other things I'm gonna do is uh, talk about genetic algorithms, although I mostly have a lot of videos on that already. I have a couple new scenarios in mind that I'm gonna do. Look at some classification and prediction algorithms, uh, neural networks, and then some uh, applications of neural networks that are kind of new research in the last few years. So if you're not aware, neural networks um, are a concept that uh, was developed in the mid 20th century. I don't know the exact date, 40s and 50s and there was a lot of excitement and wonder and amazement at the possibilities of what neural networks could do. And then um, Marvin Minsky and other researchers kind of looked at basic, simple neural networks and realized there's so many problems they just can't solve. For example, a simple perceptron cannot solve something called XOR, and then that some other research came along to do this other kind of multi-layer network, blah, blah, blah. But there was really a, a lot of excitement around neural networks, but the, um, I guess it's uh, often informally referred to as like the AI winter. There wasn't a lot of research that got very far for a long time until quite recently with some of these new advents in um, deep learning. What is deep learning? So this is stuff that I want to get into and that's going to come towards more towards the end of the course. Um, so um, I'm getting questions in the chat. Um, do you think you'll be back later today for a streaming session or is your schedule pretty much shot until next week? So I am going to commit to coming back <laughs> uh, for at least one hour at some point this afternoon. I lost about an hour for the, because um, I lost about an hour with the fire issue. And two, things that I haven't done right now is, I guess I kind of talked about the machine learning syllabus. Um, I didn't get to show these examples of work from the community. So I want to be able to show those. And <clears throat> I wanted to do, I felt like after this sort of crazy week that I've had, um, I wanted to do, do some sort of simple and fun coding challenges. Binary tree I put on there because it's kind of a, a, a nice entry point to some of the graph system stuff that I want to do next week. Um, but everybody's always asked for Pong and I feel like, Pong, can I bring back, a bunch of people in the last week have asked me to bring back the timer. I think the, probably not the core audience of my channel, but there's some, um, the casuals who just kind of watched the snake video, the purple rain video. I have these two videos that uh, had a timer going and a coding challenge that actually could be done in somewhere between 15 and 30 minutes. So I might, where's this, what's this March 10th thing, Alka, that you keep posting about? Oh, it says March 10th here. Thank you. Today's March 17th. So I was thinking about doing that. So, uh, Fire day. Yeah. So I'm sorry, everybody. This has been a bit of a, a fail for this morning. I hope that discussion of uh, neural networks, I mean, sorry, not neural networks. Ah! <laughs> that discussion of machine, ah, not machine learning. <laughs> that discussion of, and I'm very specifically, my syllabus, it does not say machine learning. It does not say AI. It just says intelligence and learning. So that's my core topic. And there's some pieces of it which I hope 
that will be able to program from scratch and understand how it works. And some of it will actually be like, can we just get the thing to compile? And that's kind of going to be my point of view. And I'm, this is all new to me. I'm slightly terrified, but I do enjoy this kind of learning with you as I try stuff on the channel. Um, so, um, so that's that. Um, so I don't know what time this will be. Let me look at it now. My, I would like to say that I'm going to come back at around 2 o'clock for one hour. That's what I'm sort of hoping to do. I guess stay tuned to the live stream page. That's a place where I can update the time and I will also tweet and uh, post a note in the chat. Um, all right, let me see if I can take uh, five minutes of any just random questions from the chat. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm reading the YouTube chat, which I'm looking at the Slack chat. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking at these interesting. Oh, camera went off. Uh, uh, don't show processing work or is mine just not good enough? I don't, um, so though I take the work from uh, people who are in the patron group, which is a Slack channel for um, uh, viewers who have chosen to help uh, fund some of the efforts that I'm doing through uh, patreon.com. But I'm happy to show work, oh, what kind of <laughs> hair products do I use? What kind of, I'm happy to show work from other people. The best way would be to tweet me uh, and I can, I can, uh, I love to show stuff from processing. Um, what time is it where you are? It is a 12.25 p.m. East Coast time. Do you ever do stuff other than JS such as Python or other web stuff like HTML and CSS? I definitely do use HTML and CSS in a lot of my tutorials. Um, and, um, but I have not done any tutorials in Python. I do have a plan. One thing I am, um, thinking about is looking at TensorFlow as a, as a um, framework to do some, to implement some of these machine learning algorithms. And TensorFlow, one way to use TensorFlow is through Python. And I'm thinking about creating a simple Python server that runs the TensorFlow stuff. And then I can query it from a processing sketch or a P5.js web page to visualize. So, um, you know, on the one hand, you don't need that other aspect of it of P5 or processing, but that's something, anybody wants to help with that, I have a couple links. Um, um, oh, I need to find, where did I put those? Uh, uh, let me find those, because I'm going to um, open that as an issue. So one place that you might also look at is machine learning coding train. Let's just see what comes up if I Google that. Look at this, fourth link. Um, so this is a repository from the community of just a ton, a ton of links that are relevant to machine learning. And I, the link that I'm looking for right now is, oh no, it's not here. <laughs> um, it was, the reason why I thought it might be here is because uh, it was a couple links that Patrick Hebron sent to me. And Patrick Hebron is actually a researcher here at NYU and has written a book called Machine Learning for Designers, which I highly recommend and also has an accompanying webcast. So if you want to go watch something about somebody who knows about this stuff, <laughs> go check out Patrick's stuff. Um, but I'll have to find those. I'm going to add those. I'm just going to make it an issue right now. Issues. Oh, look at this. All these issues already. Um, oh, I need to sign in. Oh, dear. Pick a username. No, no. I sign, sign in. Oh, no, 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 no. I have no idea what my password. I just did a whole, like, redo of all my passwords. It's all coming from one password. I have all, I'm two-step verified on everything now. <laughs> So can somebody for me, I'm going to log in, can somebody for me go to shiftman slash noc dash this repository issues and file an issue that says prepare simple flask server that serves TensorFlow data to processing and or P5. Thank you very much. Um, I'm looking for any other questions. What path did you learn to take, what path did you take to learn to code? This is from 
uh, Cody Fuller. Oh, uh, and Ada asks book recommendations. These are good questions. Um, so I've actually, I kind of would throw this, okay. So um, for a path that I took to learn to code. Well, I'll tell you my first experience with coding was probably, I'm trying to guess the year. Let's see, I think it was about somewhere between third and fourth grade. This would be like 1981, 1982. So I'm gonna ask a fact chest, fact, fact check. I was born in 1973, for those of you who are asking what my age is. Um, and so the first computer that I programmed on was an Apple II Plus, and I programmed in BASIC. And I actually did a science fair project on perception where I wrote a basic program to flash things on the screen, at, like flash a word and leave it on only for a certain amount of time and to test whether people could see it and then type the word back in. Hey, that would be a great coding challenge. Somebody, <laughs> I'd redo, ah, it's great, let's do my old third, fourth grade science fair project in JavaScript. Somebody add that to the rainbow topic suggestions. They all come do that this afternoon. Um, so, but then I, I don't think I did any programming again until I believe in middle or high school, I did some more basic and per perhaps some logo and even a little assembly language in like a computer class. Then I never did any programming again until after I graduated from college. <laughs> At some point, I took an evening class on C++, like, oh, maybe I should try some of that. I did not like it at all. Terrible class. I couldn't figure anything out. Gave that up. Then in 2001, um, I came as a student to ITP, which is the program where I teach right now. Um, and I, I took a class called Introduction to Computational Media, and it was taught using the Lingo programming language from Macromedia Director. And just the sort of interactive animation quality of that kind of hooked me. And I rediscovered a lot of my interest in math and science and logic and numbers through programming. And the kind of then I found processing, started writing tutorials for processing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I mostly lear I learned, I would say mostly as being an ITP student. And I would say the primary way that I learned to program was trying to figure out processing, which was a new thing at the time, um, and um, trying to like write tutorials and stuff. And um, uh, JT Nimoy did a workshop on processing at ITP, which was the first time that it, that it came to ITP and where I heard about it. And also Amit Pitaru uh, taught a class at ITP that used processing both before I started using processing at ITP. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, I'm sorry about this botched live stream for today. I hope you got something out of it, or at least it was nice to see each other. It is 12.30. I am going to attempt to come back. Stay tuned at some point for one hour. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to put up a Twitter poll. I don't know which to, I don't know. I don't know if they're, Maybe I'll just run my spinning. This is, I gotta figure out what am I gonna do in that one hour? Uh, maybe, I don't know. It's not gonna be Chrome extensions. Well, it could be actually. It could be any of these things. So I'm gonna come back and uh, do one or two of these things in an hour later, show work from the community, and um, that's that. Also, ah, stay tuned. I will release. Um, uh, you might have, well, you might have seen this live last week, but the edited versions are now ready. If I go to my YouTube channel, um, look, I'm live now. Uh, this uh, I published 19 hours ago, the uh, Coding Challenge 64.1 Forward Kinematics. Um, all of the other uh, follow-ups are actually available if you just go to the Coding Challenge. They're unlisted because I kind of release them one a day. But if you go to the Coding Challenges playlist and go to the bottom, you'll see they're all here. So if you're looking for something to watch and of interest, forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, inverse kinematics with a fixed point, and then multiple tentacle thingy-bobobbers. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. 10 minute Pong challenge. I really like to do that today. You know why it would be good? Because what we can do later is we can make an, an AI system that plays Pong. So that, I think, maybe I'll do that Pong challenge. Can I really do it in 10 minutes? Maybe what I'll even do, I was talking about this earlier, is I'll do it in processing but then I'll do, I'll do it twice. I'll do it in processing, but then I'll do it in JavaScript, but instead of doing it in a canvas, I'll use like DOM elements, like divs and text boxes and things to like be the, 
be the palm. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. 10 minutes is probably unrealistic. I should probably say 20 minutes. Is that more real? Especially because I talk too much. But maybe that's what I'll do this afternoon. Okay? So if you're interested in that, apologies for a little bit of the confusion around the machine learning stuff. Um, I, as you see next week, I'm going to look at graph systems. Um, I'm looking, anybody wants to help me with that, just chime in on GitHub, open GitHub issues. Uh, let's help make those examples great. Oh boy, did I really just say that? I, in a way that made me very uncomfortable. Um, and uh, see you guys. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to hit stop now. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> did that actually work? <laughs> Somebody said you forgot about the book recommendations. <laughs> Does this actually work? Am I back? Let's see here. Uh, book recommendations. I don't actually have book recommendations. But I, I just started reading a book called, uh, it's by, um, hold on. Let me go to Amazon. Um, this is a book that I'm looking at. Ah, Make Your Own Neural Network. Um, there is, a, am I logged in under my account? No, I'm not. Um, so this is a book that I just got. It's a, I think it's, it's uh, if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's free. It's uh, $4 for uh, the online version. So I don't, I'm, I'm not saying recommending, I'm recommending this in the sense that I, I just started reading it. Maybe I'm like three or four pages in. And it looked like when I was looking for something that I could follow that didn't have code in, in, in processing our JavaScript, um, and I could sort of follow it and try to re-implement the stuff that's in the book. So this I think I'm going to use as a basis. Um, so that was one recommendation. And the other recommendation I have is under books here. Ah, <laughs> uh, Patrick Hebron. What's this reinforcement learning book? Um, you know what I'm going to do is go to the library today. Did you know that you can go, there's this place, it's called the library. And it's full of books. And you can go find any book you want and take it with you. You just have to bring it back later after you've finished. It's amazing. So maybe I'll go to the library. So I would love um, anybody who has any uh, book recommendations in particular uh, that are accessible, friendly, and uh, for machine learning, artificial intelligence topics, um, please feel free to add to this repository, uh, coding train slash machine learning. And then, of course, there's the classic, the other book that I always use as a reference. I mean, it's got to come up. Why am I blanking on the authors? If I just search for artificial intelligence book, it's the seminal book. At least how I think of it. Oh, there's, oh yeah, there's, yeah, this one. Um, Artificial Intelligence, A Modern Approach, uh, Norvig and Russell. So this is a book that I often use also as a kind of reference. Um, is this, someone is saying, is this linked down? This one? Oh, it's there. Maybe there's a different one. Uh, this one. Oh yeah, this is a book. I have looked at this. I haven't um, actually read it yet. Oh yeah, I guess it's just an error. I think there's some extra stray characters in that link because this is the book that's also been uh, recommended. Um, I should probably, you know what the thing is? Oh, does this have a print version? Yeah, my issue is I, I'm a little bit weird. I, I, don't, I don't do very well reading books on, I, on a computer. Kindle, great. Print book, great. But I have trouble reading. So this one I think is only available as an ebook in PDF format. So I think that's I kind of that was that's why I didn't bother to get it. Although I guess I could print it out. Um, okay. Uh, sorry. Now I'm going again, um, and I will see you guys later this afternoon. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna do Palm. Let's just celebrate. Happy Friday. End of spring break. It's freezing. There was like a foot of snow this week. Thank you, spring break. <laughs> Let's come back, let's do Pong later today and just have a good time. Okay, and then next week we'll do some harder stuff. <laughs> I don't feel like doing anything hard today. I, need to go, I gotta go to lunch. Okay, goodbye. Now I'm